Yeah, hi folks. Yes, it's quite clear Adern and her media are keeping COVID-19 political. And it doesn't have to be. For me, it's quite simple. You either take a risk with the vaccine or you don't. Either way, we've got to stop with this uh, lockdown BS and start living with this virus, as no lockdowns can counter this Delta variant. And as for masks, they're not needed outside. So why do they force people in New South Wales who are not exercising to wear them? And what is it with this woke media and their virtue signalling mask wearing photo ops? Mostly outside and mostly alone. Laura is with us now. Kia ora, Laura. You, the queues for the testing stations are long and there was a new test. And Kristen's with us now from inner city Wellington. The capital outbreak prompting a dedicated quarantine facility. Kristen, what more can you tell us about that? And those cases in the capital have sparked concerns about the length of time it's taking to get locations of interest up on the Ministry of Health website. This sometimes happens hours after people have been alerted via apps or emails. Political editor Jessica Much Mackay joins us now live. Jess, there's a great sense of urgency around this outbreak. Why? And Andrew joins us now from Sydney to Nakoi. Andrew, the ever-increasing New South Wales outbreak is putting mass... And there have been tense moments back here as well, especially with people refusing to wear masks in places like supermarkets. Police have charged a man in Christchurch after he spat at a security guard. For more details, let's go live to Lisa Davies in Christchurch. How did it all this start, Lisa? Well, good evening, Wendy. And it doesn't stop there. And we begin with May Heron in the capital, where hopes of coming out of level four were quickly dashed, May. Yes, Simon, this is... Nicole, what are some of the solutions being put forward to alleviate the strain on testing stations? Well, Simon, Dr Ashley Bloomfield did... Political reporter Mikey Sherman is with us live from Parliament now. And Mikey, the country hunkering down in lockdown until at least Tuesday, but is the writing already on the wall for Auckland to stay in level four a lot longer? What exactly was revealed at the press conference? Delta outbreak has forced the closure of several Auckland supermarkets. Simon Merceps have the one most seriously affected, Birkenhead Countdown on the North Shore. What's led to these stores closing, Simon? Well, Simon, uh, obviously supermarkets are amongst those... Workers have been stood down and patients plunged into isolation at Auckland's North Shore Hospital. That's after a teenager who's now known to have COVID-19 was there before they knew they had the virus. Kim Baker-Wilson's there now. And what's this meant for the hospital, Kim? Anyway, now to uh, New South Wales about a week ago. I also want to stress that uh, from Monday midnight, unless you're exercising, masks should be worn outdoors everywhere across New South Wales. Uh, our concern is that when people are walking past a group of people or accidentally bumping into people, that, uh, that can cause, that fleeting contact can cause transmission. And even when you're exercising, you need to have the mask with you. In case uh, you're doing some strenuous exercise and you happen to come into contact with anybody else, the mask needs to be put on your face. And this also from police makes it easier for them to make sure that everybody is sticking to the rules. So this mask wearing outdoors, unless you're exercising, applies to every single citizen across New South Wales. Applies to every single citizen across New South Wales. Except uh, our buddies in the media, of course, like this Noddy, for example. All right, we're straight to Sydney now, where Andrew's lived every one of those nine weeks. And don't keep us hanging, Andrew. What off? And off comes the mask. Fully vaccinated people there getting soon. Yeah, good evening, Simon. A big, big treat from the state premier today, saying that vaccinated people can meet in groups of five in public parks like this one behind me tonight for picnics and for recreation as well. So a big, big light uh, at the end of the tunnel uh, for mid-September at least. Now you may be wondering, that seems a little bit silly to be doing when we're reporting case numbers like that seen today. However, there hasn't been a single recorded case of... There hasn't been a single recorded case of outdoor transmission in New South Wales of outdoor transmission in New South Wales since the pandemic began since the pandemic began so why are they forcing some people to wear masks it's absurd anyway now to Ocasio Cortez's uh, photo op <laughs> oh. 
Here she is out there dancing with no mask on. Let's take a quick photo so we can keep the pressure up so other colleagues can come out here, yeah? Is this your New York crew? <laughs> here she is in the middle of a crowd with no mask on. Now she puts a mask on, ready for the photo. Ed Markey sits down with, a, with his mask on. Housing is a human right on three. One, two, three. Housing is a human right. The photo, the photo is finished. Everybody say whiskey. Whiskey. And the masks come off. No mask. Anyway, now to the two white, all whites. Well, back here, Kiwi football legend Winton Roofer has labelled discussions around a possible name change for the <coughs> all whites as pathetic. New Zealand football's confirmed the moniker is under consideration as part of an internal review ensuring all aspects of the organisation are fit for purpose in 2021 and beyond. Michael O'Keefe has more. The name has been synonymous with some of the most important moments of the New Zealand men's national football team's history. So News NZF might be doing away with that moniker didn't go down well. It's pathetic. Winton Roof remembers how the name emerged during their qualifying campaign for the 1982 World Cup. And at a time when the Springbok series against the All Blacks was dividing the country, there was a benefit to be had in being called the All Whites. You know, to have a, an association with the All Blacks, this unbelievable, amazing brand, that was really cool. Changing the name comes as New Zealand football embarks on a journey around cultural inclusivity and ensuring their organisation is fit for purpose for 2021 and beyond. In a statement, they said it is too early in the process to speak about any outcomes, but this is an important piece of work as we strive to be the most inclusive sport in Aotearoa. In, in Aotearoa, that's all you need to know about this woke organisation. And as Trump says, all woke people are losers and everything they do turns to shite. I understand what they're trying to do, but uh, I'd like to focus on unity. Good on you. While many sports teams have undergone name changes recently due to their historical and racial links, Rufa believes this is different. We played in white shirts. It's common for football teams to be nicknamed by their shirt colour. France are called Le Bleu, and Italy are the Azzurri. Rufa thinks if the All-Whites change their name, it would set an impossible precedent. Good luck with changing the All Blacks. <laughs> so far, there's no indication as to when NZF might make a decision. Mike. Yeah, now folks, it appears the All Whites are going in the same woke direction as the Wallabies, which was started under Railing Castle's tenure at Rugby Australia. This is why the Wallabies keep losing. They're too woke. I remember their captain once complaining about the All Blacks calling one of their players a gay, and he got really, really bent out of shape over that. That says it all. <laughs>